Come on, he has risen. I said he has risen. You know, the resurrection it, it, it exemplifies hope. You know, I was just thinking, I was reading this morning in Luke chapter 24, but it says disciples were on the road to, to Emmaus and Jesus comes upon them and they didn't realize it was Jesus. And he, they're telling him what had happened. He had been crucified. He's like, Jesus, is, oh, really? That's really bad. They didn't know it was Jesus walking with them. But I was just thinking, you know, that's what resurrection does. Where the disciples, how, how many realize life doesn't always go according to plan? Come on, somebody. It doesn't always look like what you thought it was going to look like. And in fact, there's been some turns in your life that you thought, man, it tried to strip you of hope and strength and encouragement. But you know what? That's what the resurrection does. And that's these disciples were stripped of hope. But Jesus said, you know what? You don't realize that was according to plan. You thought it was a failure, but it was actually Satan playing into the hand of God for the redemption of all mankind. And his resurrection exemplifies victory and new life for every one of us. Amen. Re resurrection is hope for whatever situation you are in your life. It's hope. It is hope. Resurrection is hope. For it might be a dead marriage. It might be a dead relationship. It might be dead finances. It might, whatever it is, resurrection means life to our lives. Amen. Well, can we just start off with prayer? And then we're going to have an incredible, incredible morning. So, Father, we thank you that Jesus is alive. That Jesus is alive. And I thank you, Father God, because we live, we can face tomorrow. And I thank you, Lord God, that even as Paul prayed, he says that I might know him in the power of your resurrection. So we thank you that is alive in this building this morning. So God, we just honor you, we worship you, and we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor today. In Jesus' name, and they all said, come on, can we lift up a resurrection shout in this house? Yeah. Come alive this morning, treasure. Come alive in the name of Jesus, I'll keep you safe. Do you see what I see?
Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong. Come on, you can do better than that, church. Man. He makes no way where there is no way. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Isn't that good news? I mean, what a day to celebrate the goodness and the mercy of the Lord. What a great day to be in the house of the Lord. So I want you to do something for me. Would you just turn around to somebody you did not come with? Just give them a knuckle, a wave. Tell them, hi, come on, tell them you look skinny, you look good. Tell them you look wonderful. Just tell them, tell them hi, come on, just tell somebody hi. Tell them hello. Come on, tell them you're glad you see them. And you online, we want to welcome everybody that's online, everybody that's sitting outside. We want to welcome you. We are so glad uh, that you are with us. If you're tuning in from wherever you might be tuning in, I know that we've got people tuning in from all over the world, and I want to give a special welcome uh, to Africa, and uh, we are just really glad that you are with us today, and uh, so wonderful for you to be with us. And uh, uh, would you do me a favor? Would you just go ahead and take a seat uh, this morning? 
Uh, we're going to do things. Uh, if you've been around the rock, you know that uh, we've got a certain decorum. That means we do cer certain things a certain way. But today we're going to do it a little bit differently. And uh, uh, um, how many of you know that today is a day of celebration? Yeah. Amen. And, and if, you're a, if you're a Christ follower, it is a day of celebration. And we celebrate God's goodness and God's mercy. So uh, uh, I just want to first of all say welcome to everybody. If you're a first-time guest with us, can we give our first-time guests just a warm welcome? Come on, let's give them a warm welcome. Yeah, we are so glad that you're with us. We know you've got choice of a lot of great churches in the valley. And uh, we always say this, we are all working together to proclaim the name of Jesus. Amen. We are not in competition with uh, the body of Christ. We are in completion. And uh, uh, we, we know that we might not be everybody's flavor, but we're glad that you showed up today. And uh, we were a little bit more loud uh, uh, than you used to. But hey, you know what? This is what we say. If uh, people can get excited over a ball that doesn't bounce right, and, uh, and now the master's on it. People can get excited of a little white ball that a guy nails with a little wooden stick for 300 yards and, you know, put in a hole. How many of you know we can yell about a man that came out of the biggest hole? Amen. And his name is Jesus. He is alive. And so we have joy today because of that, and, um, and uh, we are really excited. So if you're a guest with us today, you can text Rock Guest to 94000, Rock Guest to, uh, to 94000, and uh, uh, we'll connect with you and help you get connected here. If that's what you so would like uh, to get connected here at the Rock Church, we are just so glad that you are with us today. Uh, then also, uh, I just want to make a few uh, quick announcements, and that is that uh, we're going to have a little bit of a of a skit here and during the production, there will be some strobe li uh, lights. And so if you are sensitive to that, I just want to make you aware of that. And then also uh, during the skit, we just need you to stay in your seats because we will have some people moving up and down the aisles and they might run you over and you might need a resurrection. And we don't... <laughs> Uh, we don't want that to happen to you. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, the service is not going to be that long. You should have gone party already. So, uh, you know, it's like when I used to drive with my kids, I used to say, hey, two rules. When my tank is full, your bladder is empty. And the only, the only, time, your, the only time your bladder is full is when I stop to get gas. That's the only time. And uh, so uh, they, they last a long time, I just want you to know. But they boys too, so if they needed to go, we'd just stop. But anyway, uh, uh, so I, I just want you to know, right now, bladder's empty, all right? <laughs> you, your bladder's like the tomb, it's empty, hallelujah. So... Uh, um, we are glad for that. So please be reminded of that. Now, in this cheerful atmosphere, let me ask you a question. What kind of giver does God love? Cheerful. A cheerful giver whose heart is where? In their giving. Let's prepare to uh, give and receive today's tithes and offerings. If this is your church and you believe in what God's doing here, then you be faithful and be generous in your giving. And we know that the Lord will be generous to you. So let's honor the Lord uh, uh, in our giving today. And uh, you can follow some of the instructions on giving that's on the screen here behind me. Those of you online, you can do exactly uh, the same. Uh, do that as well. But let's honor the Lord. As we prepare to give and receive today's tithes and offerings, we're going to see some of the instructions announcements that is on for the next couple of weeks. So check this out. Happy Easter! We are so glad that you are joining us this morning as we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. My name is Chase. And my name is Mariah. And today we'll be sharing with you this week's announcements. But before we get into that, we just want to take a moment to welcome any first-time guests. If it's your first time here, we want to get connected with you. You can pull out your phones right now and text ROCKGUEST to 94000. You'll then receive a text back immediately with instructions on how to get connected here. We look forward to hearing from you. You. Now's the time to continue our worship in the form of our giving. And what kind of giver does God love? Cheerful. That's right, a cheerful giver whose heart is in their giving. So let's be obedient and cheerful in our giving today. On the screen right now, there are various ways for you to give. You can give through our app or through our website through PayPal or Kindred. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the dollar amount that you would like to give to the number on the screen. And if you're on campus, there are various drop boxes throughout the sanctuary and the four-year area where you are able to drop off your tithes and offerings. Thank you for partnering with us as we reach this great Temecula Valley and beyond. Now while you're currently giving or preparing to give, we have just a few announcements for you. 
Today is the last day to buy a raffle ticket for our world's largest Easter basket. Our world's largest Easter basket is our biggest Kids Rock fundraiser of the year. And when you buy a ticket, you not only support our children's ministry, but have an opportunity to win the whole thing. And that includes four tickets to SeaWorld, four tickets to the zoo, four tickets to Sesame Place, and four Knott's Berry Farm season passes. You have until 12.30 p.m. today to purchase a ticket. You do not have to be present to win. Thank you so much for supporting our children's ministry. It is a great time to join a small group here at The Rock. We believe that we are stronger together. When we are rooted in godly community, we set ourselves and our church community up to win. Find your tribe in a Rock small group today. Kids Rock Parents, our Kids Night Out is happening on Friday, May 5th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. and it's for ages newborn to fifth grade. It is going to be a great night of fun, games, food, and learning about how that we are all made in the image of God on purpose for a purpose. The cost is only $15 per child with a maximum cost of $30 per family. If you would like to register your kids, be sure to head out to the 411 information station after service or visit our website, rock.org forward slash kids rock. Be sure to register as soon as possible because space is limited. Our Rock Men's Conference is happening Friday, April 28th from 6.30 p.m. to 9 o'clock p.m. and Saturday, April 29th from 8 o'clock a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. The cost is only $65 per person. This will be an awesome time of fellowship and incredible messages by many guest speakers. Snacks will be provided on Friday and a continental breakfast and lunch will be provided on Saturday. For more information and to register, you can head out to the 411 information station after service or visit us at our website gotrock.org. Here at the Rock Church, we have so many ministries that happen throughout the week. From rock youth to rock women, young adults, marriage rocks, rock men, there are so many ministries to take part of here. If you would like more information about everything that happens during the week here, on the screen you will see a QR code that will take you directly to a link tree. There you will see all the ministries listed as well with information on dates and times. There is a place for everyone here at the Rock Church and if you have any more questions, you can head out to the 411 information station after service. Well, those are just some of the exciting things happening here. For more information, you can head out to the 401 information station after service. Or you can follow us on our various social media pages such as Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. You can also visit our website, gotrock.org, for all things The Rock Church. Now, church, get ready and prepare your hearts for this very special Easter service. Are you ready for the Word today? Yeah. Well, let's get right into the Word of God today. I'm going to read uh, out of three different passages, out of the book of Luke, the book of Matthew, the book of Mark. So we're trying to cover as many Gospels as we can, because some of you only come to church once a year. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Maybe not. Uh, but I, I have a question uh, for you today, and it's a very simple question, and I titled this, Can You See? Say that with me. Say, Can You See? Can you see? And it really is a question that uh, we all have to ask ourselves. And uh, I want to talk about this in relation to Jesus and, and really uh, who He is. And let me read this out of Luke, Luke 23. And it says this, When the Roman officer overseeing the execution saw what had happened, he worshipped God and said, Surely this man was innocent. And when all the crowd that came to see the crucifixion saw what had happened, they went home in deep sorrow. But Jesus' friends, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching. That's a little bit of Luke's account. Let's go to Matthew's account, Matthew 27. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked and the rocks were split. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And many women who followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, were there looking on from afar among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Now Mark's account, Mark 15. 
Verse 37, And the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the Roman officer who stood facing him saw how he had died, he exclaimed, This man truly was the Son of God. Some women were there watching from a distance, including Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger and of Joseph, and Salome. They had been followers of Jesus and had cared for him while he was in Galilee. And many other women who had come with him to Jerusalem were there also. So when we look at these three accounts, we see that there are three particular crowds that, uh, and three particular groups that these guys are, uh, are addressing to us. They, 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 they talk about the soldiers at the cross. They talk about the crowds that were there to come and see the crucifixion. And then they talk about the followers of Jesus that were there, mostly women, and uh, they were watching from a distance. And Jesus has bre- breathed his final breath. He is dead. Now, I struggle even to say that because you and I know that Sunday happened. But without Friday, Sunday would never be possible. Without Friday, we would not have access to the presence of God. Without Friday, there is no forgiveness. There is no freedom for the sinner. Thank God for Friday. I I want to paint this picture at the cross. And three different groups of people are are mentioned by Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And uh, and we just mentioned them uh, in a minute. But three different groups. And all of these people brought together by the crucifixion of Jesus. They are all there for different reasons. The centurion and company, they, they are there to see that the sentence is just completely carried out. The crowds are there because they've come to see the spectacle of Jesus on the cross. The followers of Jesus are there, and they are there in total disbelief. They, they have come to mourn. Each group focused on Jesus, albeit all for different reasons. Jesus means different things to all of them. To the centurion, he is a failed revolutionary. To the crowd, he is a failed messiah. To his followers, he is hope that has gone awry. Hope has gone wrong. Matthew, in his writing style, gives us kind of an an overview, and he kind of paints this picture. He goes back and forth. He mixes the present and then the future together. He tells us that Jesus dies, the veil rips, an earthquake happens, and rocks are split. And then he fast forwards to Sunday, and he speaks about the resurrection of some of the saints, and that they came out of their graves after Jesus was raised. How many of you know that was a surprise to many? Can you give me an amen? Not only Jesus came out of the grave, there were other saints that came out of the grave as well. I said on Friday, you buried grandmother, and a week later, she's back. Here's grandma back home telling you about what happened. But he mentions the centurion and soldiers, and and then he mentions how how terrified they were. The crowd, on the other hand, only the only way that they saw Jesus is they saw Jesus as a meal ticket. How do we know this? In John 6, 24, the Bible says this. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went across to Capernaum to look for him. They found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous sign. A huge crowd followed Jesus. Why? Because of all the miracles, all the healings, all the miraculous things. He he climbs on a hill and he sits down with his disciples around him. John writes and he says this, it's close to Passover time. And Jesus knows what he's going to do. But he tests Philip by asking him where they can buy bread to feed all these people. And I think some of you, you know what happens. Jesus feeds the crowd with a little boy's lunch. The crowd is so happy in that moment, they want to force Jesus to be their king. As a matter of fact, the Bible says they wanted to, with, with, with assault, wanted to take him and wanted to crown him. So what does Jesus do? He leaves. Jesus knows that the only reason the crowd is following him is because of what he can give them. Jesus tells them that they have no understanding of the miracle and what it actually means. They brag about the bread and the manna when the true bread of heaven is in their midst. Jesus is simply a means to an end for them. Now at the cross, there is a feeling. They have a feeling, and their feeling is blow out the lamp, the party is over. It is finished. They leave the cross, and the Bible describes them leaving the cross with deep sorrow. Then you've got the other group, the followers of Jesus. They are in complete shock. Uh, We know they shouldn't be, but they are. 
The words, it is finished, meant that all their hopes, all their dreams, all their aspirations are ending on a Roman cross. How many of you understand that nobody expected a resurrection? Nobody expected nobody in the grave on Sunday morning. The writers of the Gospels all remark that they are standing at a distance, all of them. Luke says it like this, but Jesus' friends, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching. Matthew says, and many women who followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, were there looking from afar. Mark says, some women were there watching from a distance. So can we all come to an agreement that they were not close? Are you with me? They are standing at a distance. They are standing afar. They are trying to slowly but surely, uh, they're going through the emotional process and they're trying to detach themselves of what, what their hopes were to what they are seeing happening in front of them. To say that they are disillusioned would be trite. How many of you understand all their hopes were set into Jesus? They are standing at a distance trying to reconcile the Jesus that they ministered with for three years and that they saw and the Jesus that is now hanging dead on the cross. Kind of reminds us of a conversation that Jesus had with Philip, the same guy that he tested uh, when he did the miracle of the fish and the loaves. This is in John 14 when Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. How many of you know people always want to be shown something? Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Here's my question to you and I today. Is it possible to be around Jesus and not really know Jesus? How many times did he not tell them that this was his destiny? He also told them, if you read scripture, you'll see that he told them, I'll see you on Sunday, and he gave them the address for the party. He told them, I'm going to be there, I'm going to go ahead of you to Galilee, and then come and join me. Anybody? Okay, watch this. I'll I'll read it to you if you don't believe me. Look at Matthew 26, 32. But after, listen to these words, after I have been what? From the, I mean, if you know, you have to be dead to be raised from the dead. So he's telling them, after I've been what? Raised from the dead. So they should know this. Watch this. I will go ahead of you to Galilee and what? Meet you there. But now at the cross, they are staring from a distance and leave with regret. If they truly believe what Jesus said, how many of you know they would have packed their bags on their way to Galilee? You see, the centurion, on the other hand, he is simply there. Why is he there? He's there to do a job. He has no agenda but to do what needs to be done. He has to be the one to make sure that Jesus dies. He's not mourning like the crowd. And unlike the disciples, he is not at a distance grieving with grief or regret. He is the closest to the cross. Mark says the centurion is actually facing Jesus and he sees how Jesus dies. Now, the next shout at the cross, I find this amazing, is from a sinner's mouth. And he shouts, truly, this was the Son of God. When the veil is torn and the rocks are split, the centurion and his gang are riddled with fear. Why? I believe he has a revelation. All throughout Scripture, when heaven intercepts earth, whether by angelic visitation or by God's presence, the first response is always fear. It is the sinner closest to the Savior that sees him for who he truly is. The centurion does not leave in sorrow, neither does he leave with regret. He actually simply stays and worships. Here's my question to you. How is it that the sinner worships, the crowd cries, and the disciples stare? You see, you need a revelation at the cross to be able to worship at the empty tomb. There is no way you can worship the way you ought to worship until you first realize who was hanging on that cross. You see, if you simply look at the cross without the revelation of the cross, you'll only be able to mourn. 
Jesus will only be a tragedy to you. If you stand at a distance, you'll only be disappointed. You have to come to the cross to see. You have to come with no agenda. The closer you are to the cross, the more likely you are able to see who was on the cross. So the question is, how close are you to the cross? You see, praise is an act of gratitude because of what I've received, but worship is an act of awe because of what has been revealed to me. You see, you can praise and you can clap, but you can only worship once you've had a revelation. And so today I want to just say this to you, no matter where you are, where you're from, what you've done, who you are, before you leave the cross, make sure you have the revelation of who was on the cross. When you do, you won't leave with sorrow and you won't leave with regret. You will simply worship and confess, this is the Son of God. You see, who He is to you will determine how you view the future. Who is He to you? He was something for anybody and everybody and all in a different way. We know to the Father, He was the sacrifice that had to be made. To the chief priests and elders, he was a blasphemer that needed to be silenced. To Judas, he was greed to be satisfied. To Peter, he was a betrayal to be regretted. To Pontius Pilate, he was a nuisance to be rid of. To Pilate's wife, he was a mistake to be avoided. To Herod, he was a threat to a throne. To the people, he was a heretic to be crucified. To Barabbas, he was a get-out-of-jail card to be exploited. To the soldiers, he was a prisoner to be abused. To Simon of Cyrene, he was a cross needed to be carried. To the first thief on the cross, he was a man to be mocked. To the second thief, he was the hope of a last chance. To John, he was the Savior to remain with. To Mary, his mother, he was a son to be mourned. To Mary of Magdalene, he was redemption to be held onto. To Joseph of Arimathea, he was a friend to be buried. To the gods, he was a dead man to be guarded. To the grave, he was a king that could not be held. To the angel, he was the living Lord that was risen. To us, he is God who makes the impossible possible. The cross speaks and asks a final question. Who is he to you? today. No other king could vanquish the war horse or silence the warrior's rage while riding the lowly back of a donkey. No other king could break the dominion of darkness, the tyranny of evil, with a reign of grace and a kingdom of peace. No other king could give his life for the redemption of rebels, his wealth to welcome the outcast. Jesus is that king, the king of glory, son of the living God. Not just another king, not just another prophet, not just another teacher. He was the one the world had been waiting for. The one to deliver us from captivity, the son of David and Abraham's chosen seed. He is the goal of the Mosaic law, Yahweh in the flesh. He is the one to establish God's reign and rule, to heal the sick, give sight to the blind, freedom to the prisoners, and proclaim good news to the poor. This Jesus was the creator come to earth and the beginning of a new creation. He embodied the covenant, fulfilled the commandments, and reversed the curse. This Jesus is the Christ that God spoke of to the serpent, the one prefigured to Noah in the flood, the one promised to Abraham, the one guaranteed to Moses before he died, the one promised to David during his reign, the one revealed to Isaiah as a suffering servant, the one predicted through the prophets and prepared for through John the Baptist. He is the Father's Son, Savior of the world, and substitute for our sins. More loving, more holy, and more wonderfully terrifying than we ever thought possible. He is our Jesus, and there is no other king like him. He is our God, our glory, our victorious Savior. 
There is no other king like him. There is no other king. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world obeying the devil. The commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. And all of us used to live that way following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger just like everyone else.
helpless. Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Gives us a future 
is our living hope. Love came down. I was broken and ashamed. He still knew my name. Love came down. He dried my eyes. I know not why, but by man he spoke not a word they took not his life but he laid his life down he laid his life down oh despised by the world and rejected by man he spoke not a word they took not his life but he laid his life down, he laid his life down. Love came down, why would he bleed just for me? Love came down, look at him, he took my sin. And I What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else also? Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord.
as good as this when I gave up on me and there were days when I gave up on me you never And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this. That behold, two men stood by them in the shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee?
Come on, let's glorify His name. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you can. So what are you going to do with this Jesus? There's only one or two things. You either accept Him for who He is or you reject Him. See, life can only be lived in one or two ways. Either you say this life has no rhyme, no reason, there's no purpose, that everything you and I are experiencing is just but a massive cosmic accident, that there's no hope, there's no future, that the day that you die, that when your brain shoots that last synapsis, that's it, it's over. You know, some people who do not believe say that as Christians, we are too weak-minded. We can't face the reality of death and there's nothing there. But how many of you know that argument cuts both ways? That argument cuts this way. If we say that there is no God and that everything I do doesn't matter, that there's no judgment one day that I will never have to face for the things that I've done, then that's actually real solace. Because that gives me a license to treat people any way I want to treat them, do to people whatever I want to do to them, because I don't have to be accountable to anybody. You see, I believe that there is a God that created the heavens and the earth. There is a God that is in this room present through His Spirit. There is a God that has used every human being this morning to communicate to you in this skit to let you know that there's hope for you while there's breath in your lungs. To let you know that it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. That we will all die unless Jesus comes. But all of us will have to face God. And all of us will have to give an account for the life that we have lived. For us as Christ followers, we have solace in the fact that we know this, that we don't have to face God for what we have done. Why? Because Jesus took what we did on Himself on that cross. And we don't have access to the Father because of our works. We have access to the Father because of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Who do you see today? Because it will determine how you view the rest of your life and how you view your future. The Bible says that God has said before us life and death, blessing and a curse. The choice is yours. See, I don't know what it is about our society is that we want to hear the truth about everything else. But when it comes to Jesus, when it comes to so-called religion, we, we, we kind of bristle at the fact when somebody tells us the truth that there is a heaven and there is a hell and you will spend either in heaven or in hell, not on what God decides, but what on you decide. See, we want to blame God. Say, well, you know, if God wants to save me, he'll save me. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. There is a remedy today. The question is, will you accept Him? There is wholeness today. Will you receive Him? There's power today. Will you invite Him in? To change your life so that the chains of your life can fall off. You see, Jesus made this very clear. He said, I am the way, not a way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. We say, well, Henny, is there not many roads that lead to God? No, there's not. As simple as that, no, there's not. You say, wow, there's many roads that lead to Rome. No, I can drive out here. It doesn't lead to Rome. How many of you understand that? (laughs) If you want to reach somewhere, you you better have a road map. And you better have a way to get there. 
there's only one way to get to the Father, and that way has been made through the cross of Christ Jesus, who shed His blood. That's why He is the way. But to walk in the way, you must embrace the truth of the reality of who He is. You see, when you go to the doctor, you want to hear the truth. If you go to the doctor this week and the doctor gives you a clean bill of health and say, you know what? You are a specimen. You're a Greek God. That's how good you look. And you walk up the stairs and you go to work and you walk up the stairs and suddenly you have a massive heart attack. You can go back to that doctor and you say, doctor, I mean, what, 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 you know, you just gave me a clean bill of health. And the doctor will look at you and say, you know what? I want my medical practice to be kind. I want it to be tender. I don't want anybody to get mad. I don't want people to feel bad about what I tell them. When I tell people they are one twinkie short of seeing Jesus, people get mad at me. And I knew you were going to get mad at me. So I just told you what you wanted to hear so you feel okay. We have a whole society that wants to feel okay, but it's not okay. Jesus doesn't want you to feel okay. He wants you to be righteous. And he's the only one that can make you righteous. And until you bow your heart at that cross like that soldier and declare truly he is the son of God, nothing can change. But today could be your day. Online, outside, inside, today can be your day. So would you bow your heads with me just for a moment? And this is a holy moment. Please, nobody moving around, nobody running around. Just in this holy moment, this is a moment between you and Jesus. Either Jesus is who he says he is. Either he is the way, the truth, and the life. And I I, want to tell you that only the one who can raise from the dead, we should listen to him. And Jesus is alive today. And that is an historical fact. So what are you going to do with this Jesus? I'm going to ask you straight out, what are you going to do with this Jesus? In this moment, I want you to know that he's calling you home. He's inviting you in. He says, come. Will you be willing to come? So if you're in this room and you say, Henny, that's me. I I want to make that decision. Or maybe you're saying, you know what, Henny, I I, I need to make a brand new commitment. I kind of, you know, I I, I kind of have a little bit of Jesus and, uh, you know, a little bit of the world, a little bit of this, a little that. How many of you understand you can't just have a little bit of Jesus? You You have to have all of Jesus. Having a little bit of Jesus is like saying I'm semi pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not. You're either saved or you're not. So today you can make sure of that fact and follow him. For the rest of your days, what are you going to do with Jesus? Who do you say that I am? So right now in this room, while every head is bowed, every eye closed, and if you're saying, Henny, I want to make that choice, I want to choose to follow Christ, or you say, Henny, I want to renew my commitment to following Jesus, I want to pray with you. If that's you, here's what I'm going to ask you to do in a moment. In a moment, I'm going to clap my hands together. I'm going to count to three, one, two, three, and then clap my hands. Why do I do that? You say, why do I have to raise my hand? Jesus made this statement. He says, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father. If you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father. I'm a man. By you making that profession, by you raising your hand, you're saying, I'm not ashamed to make a profession of my faith. I'm not ashamed who sees. If Jesus can hang naked on a cross for you, then you can at least acknowledge and raise your hand and say, I'm not ashamed to say, I want to follow him. Are you ready? Right now, I'm going to count. And then the moment I say three and clap my hands, I'm just going to ask you to pop your hand up in this room online. You can use the hand raise emoji and do this as well. Outside, you can do the same thing. One, two, three. Just raise your hand up high. Just keep it raised. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, 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 hands everywhere, thank you, 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 I appreciate that, thank you back there, thank you, thank you, thank you, 
Thank you. You can put it down. Thank you. You can put it down. Thank you. I see that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Just going to give you another moment. If you're struggling, hey, listen, if you're thinking, man, this guy needs to close. I want to go eat lamb chops. I'm talking to you right now. That's you. Thank you. Online, you do the same. Here's what I'm going to ask. I'm going to lead us in a prayer. I want you to look at me real quick. Everybody just look at me. Look up here. I'm going to pray a prayer. There's no magic. This is not an abracadabra prayer. This is not magic words. But this is words to invite Christ in. And I want you to mean this from the bottom of your heart. And let's pray this together. Let's all of us pray. Even if you've prayed this before, even if you don't believe it today and you're just here to celebrate, pray with those that are making this profession of their faith. Are you ready to pray this? Let's pray. Bow your heads. Let's pray. Say this. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for what you did for me on the cross, shedding your blood. Thank you, Jesus, that today I can be forgiven. Today I can receive your forgiveness right now. I confess with my mouth Jesus Christ as Lord. I believe with all my heart that you were raised from the dead and you are alive. Come now and live in me. Thank you that my past is forgiven and forgotten, washed away by the blood of Christ. I declare, I declare, just like the centurion, truly, you are the Son of God. Save me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. If you believe that, Give the Lord a clap offering that He is worthy of it today. Amen and amen. Now listen, if you prayed this prayer with us, I'm going to let you go here in a moment. But if you prayed this prayer with us, here's what I'm going to, I'm going to encourage you to do this as strongly as I can. Uh, I want you to take, there's a blue card in the seat pocket in front of you. I want to take that blue card out. Even if this is a recommitment, take that blue card out. I want you to fill this card out. And you say, Henny, you know, w- w- what is this next step all about? It's about your next step. How many of you understand it's great to pray a prayer, but you need some encouragers in your life. You need, you need to learn the truth. You need to know what it is that you believe. You need to know, uh, you need to know that there are people that are going to battle with you and for you. You need to know that. And so we want to be that church. We want to come alongside of you and help you in your faith journey so that you can reach the potential that God has for you. And I, I know that His grace is sufficient. So fill out that, that, that card. And there's a couple of things you can do with it. You can either drop it in any one of the communication boxes around the building. But the best thing to do with it is take it right Right out of those triple double doors to my right, your left, and you'll find the fresh start counter right there. Give it to one of those folks, and when you do, they'll give you a little packet. If you don't have a Bible, tell them, hey, listen, I don't have a Bible. We'll give a Bible to you for free just as a gift from us to you, and uh, we want to connect with you. Uh, if those of you online, you can text decided to 94,000, decided to 94,000. Do that right now, and uh, someone will reach out to you and let you know what is available. Listen, if you're in the area, I want to encourage you come on out as a matter of fact we are much skinnier when you see us live the camera adds 40 pounds just to let you know we actually look really good so come on out see us we smell good we take showers we really need people come out and see us uh, don't just sit at Intaza come out of Intaza in the name of Jesus Lazarus and get here and uh, uh and, and let's, let's grow together. If you're not in the area, let us know. And we will let you know about some great churches that you can belong to. But you need to be in a Bible-believing church. You need to be fellowshipping with other, other believers. You need to learn the Word, grow in the Word. You need to serve. And we want to encourage you. Say, man, Henny, that's a mouthful. I thought I'd just make a decision. Yeah, but now you've got to follow Jesus. That decision has consequences. And let's do it God's way. This is not about escaping hell. How many of you understand that? This is not just fire insurance. This is life assurance. And so I want to encourage you, do that, so we can grow together in the faith. Amen, somebody. Well, let's stand to our feet. And uh, can you give me one more shout? Oh, you can do better than that. Yeah. 
We want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all the volunteers, everyone that was part of the skit, Pastor David and his team, Chase, and there are so many. I just want you to know that I personally trained Corbin and the dancers, and uh, those dance moves, we worked hard. We choreographed for a long time, and Ahisha, and Ahisha nailed it, didn't she? I'm so proud of her. Uh, she's such a good lady. Amen. So give them a great God bless you. They did awesome. And let me pray over you right now. Father, I thank you. These are your people called by your name. I pray that you bless them wherever they may go. Bless their gathering together with family and remind them every moment that this is about proclaiming the death, burial, and resurrection of King Jesus. Come and be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen, amen and amen. Listen. God bless you. Don't forget the uh, Easter baskets out there. And we will have prayer teams in the front. If you need prayer for anything, let them pray with you and for you. God bless you. See you next week.